Welcome to Piano Video Lessons Year 1. In today's lesson, Unit 2, Lesson 5, we're going to be learning two new notes in the bass clef. This is video number 21 on YouTube. And we're going to um, have a quick look here for a second at all of the notes that we've learned so far. All right, so I've just laid out here the uh, answer mat and all of the flashcards, all of the 10 cards that we've learned so far. And you'll see that there are two right here that we have not learned yet. And uh, those notes are going to be the note B, which is a space note below middle C, and A, which is on the top line of bass clef. So you could find those two flashcards in your set, uh, the top line and the uh, one note a space above the top line in your bass clef set and you could add those to your uh, flashcard set. But I'm just going to teach those notes to you now in a clear manner because you know just talking about flashcards well anybody can do that but let's just talk about the notes here on the grand staff. So um, we know middle C in the bass clef and I'm just going to draw it here. So here we have middle C in the bass clef and a snowplow going by on my street, if you can hear that. Um, so here we have middle C on the bass staff, and it's a line note. And we know that notes on the piano move by line to space to line to space to line to space to line to space. So if I started on a line note and I move down one note, I'm going to end up in a space. And so here I'm ending up in the space that's touching the top line of the bass staff. So here we had middle C. And now here we have the note B. And I like to think of this note as a little bird that's like sitting on a telephone wire. So if you can just imagine a little bird sitting here, that is the note B. So B looks like a bird sitting on top of the telephone wire. And then we can have another note just below B. And if B was a space note, we know that the note that's down one from it's going to be on a line. And on the piano, we have C down to B down to A. So this is the note A. And um, there is a way to remember this as well, and or I think there is. And if you think of a top student in school, they usually get A's. And so if you just imagine that this top line is the top student in the bass clef, um, then you'll remember that a top student always gets the mark of an A um, or an A plus. But here we have the note A and it lives on the very top line of the bass staff. So turning now to your lesson materials, here we have um, Unit 2, Lesson 5, and the instructions here say to label the missing notes on the keyboard. So coming down from C, we have B and then A and then we have the other notes that we've already learned. And then looking at this group of notes, you can see the middle C and all of the notes on lines and spaces in the entire bass clef. And we can find the B here on the staff. We can circle it and we can remember that it looks like a bird sitting on the very highest telephone wire. And we can also circle this note A and we can remember that it's on the top line like a top student gets an A. And then in here you see the flashcards and all of the notes now that we know. And let's just look at that on the piano. We know from C going out all the way to E and A. That's a lot of notes, all right? So we actually now have 12 flashcards that we can answer when we're practicing. I would also like to draw your attention to the very back of your lesson materials. There is a staff and keyboard chart. And I want to show you how this works because at this point you're getting a lot of notes. You might sometimes want to just reference a quick note here or there. So let's fill in these notes on this chart. And what I want to show you is that the piano here is just exactly like our piano is here. It's, it's, it's in the same going in the same horizontal direction. And then I've taken the treble clef and the bass clef and I've lied them on their side. So, you know, normally when we're reading music, we see them going up and down like this, treble and bass. But now we're seeing them laying over on their side. So what we're going to do is we're going to see that what I have carefully done here is create this keyboard so that it's matching the location of the answers for all of these notes on the lines and the spaces. So that's kind of curious, but if let's say we have a note that's on this line here, we can follow down until we hit this note here, and that note is E. All right, so here we have this, remember G lives on line two. If you come right down here, you can see this line hits on the note that it belongs to. Then we have a B right here coming down and hitting on the note that it belongs to. Now we haven't learned B yet, but we could figure it out by looking at this chart. And then we could follow up to the fourth line and see 
that it's going to skip up another note from B up to D. And so the way this is so carefully lined up helps us to uh, visualize the staff now on the piano keys. Same thing here. We can see middle C is right here, and it's lined right up with this ledger line. Then here we have this top line coming down right here until it touches this note, which is the skip down from C. We know that that one is A. Then coming down another line, we can see the note F. Coming down another line, we have a note we've never learned before. This one is, you can tell, because it's a D. And coming down here another line, we have a B. And coming down here another line, this is the very bottom line of the staff, that's a G. So let's go ahead and fill these ones in, why not? Here we have E, skip up to G, skip up to B, and skip up to D, and top line F. All right, so this is just a visual that can help you. Now, in between these lines are the spaces, right? So here's a note in a space, and if you come down straight along here from the middle of this space, you can see the note lines right up with the note that it is, which is F. So this is a small version of this chart, and I like it because it sits the same way that your um, piano is. The staff is turned sideways, but you can turn your head if you're thinking about a note here. And then I've done another one where it's the opposite. I've got the staff the way you expect to see it, and then as it comes across, the piano keyboard is turned sideways. So you just have to imagine it twisting around. So you could use whichever one of these you like, but I think it's a really good idea to continue these lines and draw the answer, write the note name on the keys, and then you could use this as a little reference chart. You could keep that by the piano and you could say, oh, that's on a line. Oh, it's G. So this is just a quick reference if you are having some trouble still remembering all your notes and you want a quick chart to reference them. Awesome. Okay, I told you we'd learn a song and I wasn't telling a lie. So let's go ahead and look at this song. It's called Bluebird and you can guess that the reason I decided to write a song about a bird is because we're going to use the note B. So let's go ahead and find the B's in this song. So that's not a B. Oh, here's a B. Here's a B. Here's another B. They're so easy to find because they're sitting right on top of the staff. Let's also go through and find the A's. Remember an A is a top student in the bass clef and the top student is on the top line. So here's a line note A. Here's a line note A. That's treble clef. Now here we have a line note A and an A and an A. Excellent. So let's go ahead and um, name every note in this piece so we make sure that we know what they all are. So we have C, B, C, B, A, G, F, G, A, B, C, C. Now we're in treble clef on line two. That's our landmark note G, treble G, down to F, down to E, down to D, bass clef again, middle C, bird, A student, G. A student, bird, A student, bird, and C in the right hand. So we're going to play that one with the right hand. We could play it with the left hand, it's possible, but we're being tricky and we're going to come up and play it with the right hand. So every finger gets used in the right hand. Now we're going to figure out what fingerings to use. So we always do this. So we're going to have our one and our two, and then all the way down the fingers, and then all the way back up to thumb on C. Here we have five on G. We're going to go all the way down to two, and then take over with the left hand and when we get to G we're gonna stop. That's a little tricky right there. You wanna stop on the G. Don't go down to pinky. And Then we're gonna go A to B to A to B and switch hands to C. Alright, so make sure you switch up and use the right hand for that C. So get your pencil out, circle anything that you think is tricky, review it before you start, and then let's go ahead and try it. So this is just a simple pattern all the way down, all the way up and then down and stop with your D right here. We're going to stop with D and go to the left hand with thumb on C. All right, so let's give it a try and here we go. Uh, actually, should we count and clap first? I think we can do it. We're going to try without it, but that's the next step if you want to go back and count and clap. So here I go. I'm going to say the letters. C2, B2, C, B, A, G, F, G, A, C2, C2, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, A, B, A, B, C, 2, 3, 4. Now I'll play it again, counting to 4. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
One, two, three, four. 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 I hope you stopped on that G. Now we're going to play it again, and I'm going to say the rhyme. Blue bird sitting on the highest telephone wire. Help me learn my bass clef notes. There, A, B, A, B, C. Awesome. All right, so join me in lesson six, video number 22, where we're going to learn about notes that move by different distances called intervals or seconds and thirds.